Good afternoon. Welcome to the tea table. I am so happy you've joined me today. And do you hear the birds singing? Oh my, it is June 1st. And it is a day of beauty here. And I am sitting outside. I have some beautiful first roses from my garden. And my husband brought these to me yesterday and they had not opened up. And this morning they have fully opened. Are they absolutely the most beautiful roses? I put them in this little gold Italian vase with glass. And as I have been preparing the tea for you, the petals have been falling. So we're just literally getting this rose to show you in the nick of time. Well, I'm playing very softly Vivaldi's Four Seasons and we are playing summer right now. And it's just blending with the sounds of nature. So many bird calls here. Well, if you haven't gotten your tea yet, please pause and get your tea and I will be waiting for you. The tea I've chosen for today is from England, Herod's Earl Grey. And it says London Leaf Tea. Yes, London Leaf Tea. And so this tea that I have chosen came from my friend Elizabeth. She brought it to me back from her trip. She was able to get it and it's so beautiful. Herod's is, we've talked about before, the beautiful famous department store in London, perhaps the greatest department store in the world, and perhaps an example for years to other, uh, inspiring others to have department stores. It's just a really lovely tin, so I'm going to put that down now put it over here and I have a special treat today this is a chocolate mousse cake tort that was actually part of my son's birthday cake and it is on the most beautiful plate I'm gonna try and show you it is a very baby soft pink and I think I can hold it on to show you and then there's flowers underneath I can't show you that but I love square plates this is just one of a kind and it's from England of course and when you see a pretty plate you don't have to have them all matching I just think it's wonderful to blend all the pinks together. And I put, this is a napkin ring that is a flower. Isn't that fun? And I put it right there. So that's accompanying this fabulous tea. And I wanted to tell you that honestly, this, um, teapot is so old many teapots just have you know the teapot top this is attached I only have two or three that are attached many and see and now we're going to pour out and I thought for June isn't that a beautiful cup pink and yellow and so we will pour out of this wonderful pot. It of course has the matching creamer. And I love 
when silver sets have feet. These have nice feet. I didn't put sugar in the bowl because I don't use sugar on my tea, in my tea. However, I put in here, these are little antique sugar tongs and I will get sugar cubes for one of our tea talks and we will use these. Now, this set is very old and it has initials on it. Very light, MMH. And I looked it up, it's a very old set. And of course from England. Oh my goodness. That is probably the best tea I've had in a long time. That is spectacular. That is delicious. Let me just show you this before all the petals are gone on this beautiful rose. Let me just show you this tray. Isn't it lovely? And it's simple. It's just the creamer, the sugar, a little bouquet, and then of course my china cup. Now, if you were having tea for two, you could stack the cups if there's not room on your tray. And I've even stacked four cups on a tray and brought them in on the tea cart with the little cakes already prepared on little plates. The more preparation you can do, the better your tea will be because you can relax. I've always thought preparing the food is not the difficult thing. The more challenging is serving the food because it takes time. And so when you can think through and have it pre-cut, pre-done, even a little plate, you could put a scone, a little cake and whatever, a little fruit and serve it. And then if people would like more, you could have extra dishes on the side. Teas get so filled with things that people usually don't want more. They usually, the scone itself is very filling. And if you have a little sandwich, then that is going to also be filling. And you are going to go on and uh, be serving, perhaps sometimes there will be like a fluffy dessert. I know in England, they'll have I don't know what they actually call it, but I was in several homes and they were putting a little ice cream, a little whipped cream, a little caramel, a little, little strawberry, a little, it was a going quite involved, but small. So you got a little taste of everything. And sometimes, well, I had the privilege of traveling with a group of musicians throughout England called Shekinah. And we went to Cornwall and we stopped and we had that Cornish fabulous uh, tea, strawberries, their little cakes, and the clotted cream, which is so thick. And oh my, we sat out around, they improvise and they had all the little tables with little cloths and we sat on the grass at the tables four to a table and it was so authentic. We were traveling all around and it was quite an amazing experience. There were 60 of us. There were musicians, singers and dancers. I was a singer and it was led by Merv and Merla Watson. And we sang in Trafalgar Square. We sang at York Minster, the big cathedral. We sang at Oxford and we had our preparation time at a very unique, um, kind of a pride and prejudice country estate called Post Green. And the man and wife had offered it to us. It served all of us. We were there, I think two weeks, rehearsing, preparing, 
And I remember the girls, we were all in the maids' quarters. This was from the olden days. And it was so fun. And then one night, he was a country gentleman. And um, he said, let's do country dancing. And on the grass, he taught us all the Scottish country dancing or English country dancing, which is very much like the dance in the Pride and Prejudice movie. And it's not easy for, it's quite complex. Very fun though. And it was just, when I think of June, I think of England and I think of a cup like this. This is actually called chintz when it's all sort of pink and all the colors are just blended together with the back of another color, like this is yellow. Oh my goodness, that is the best tea. I have to pour a little more. Are you enjoying your tea? Oh, it's, no, it's so nice and hot. I love a silver pot. It keeps the tea very, very warm. And that is what is so nice. I have so many outdoor noises today. Do you hear those birds? Oh my. They have been waking me up so early. And you know, the sun is coming up now, even in the fours. It's coming up before five because these are the becoming the longest days of the year. Yes. It's time to relax. It's time to enjoy the beauty of summer. And I thought I would show you something. This has been hanging in our home forever. And it's called the Great Commandment. And I'll just show it to you. And it's a beautiful calligraphy original silk screen. And it's the Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Well, then it goes on to teach them diligently to thy children. Talk when thou sittest in thy house and when they walk in the way and when they lay down and when you rise up and it shall be assigned to you as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house and on thy gates. Well, this Deuteronomy blessing, if you wanna look at it a little closer, was done by a man named Mr. Ritchie. And we have had this since, I would say the early 1980s and he did the absolutely most beautiful calligraphy. It's an original design. Maybe I should hold it again for you that are calligraphers. You can see his letters. He literally designed his own using examples of many calligraphy. And then he has painted the flowers in its touches of gold. They are so beautiful and he did this to I don't know how many different famous portions of scripture. We have the Lord is our shepherd here also and the Psalm 23 and I think he did. I regret now that I didn't get one of each but you know you think you'll see him again but we never did see him. He was at a special gathering we were at and he was telling us that he tried to sell them to bookstores and no one was interested. So he just kind of did it on his own out of his home. And I love this so much. And I've made copies for my children to have in their home. And I just think what we put on our walls, what we put in our homes is so important. And I felt this way very much when my children were young and the books we have. I had read years ago that 
the first pictures the child sees forms ideas, thoughts, and understanding. And the first sounds a child hears. Many believe that a child's ear is established by the mother's song, the in tune. When people can sing in tune, it comes from the mother and the lullabies. Isn't that beautiful? And truly singing in the home is where everything starts and really where everything ends because singing is the thing you can do your whole life. Many play good, beautiful instruments, but sometimes they can't continue playing. But the singing voice can continue singing. My mother was 92 and she could still sing like a bird. She had a beautiful alto voice, a very warm, comforting voice. Her voice was my first voice in my ear. And sometimes when I'm singing, it I can hear her singing. It's so interesting. And when you study history in the last hundred years, having everything on a stage was really new. Really, where most of the music was happening was in the home, around the piano, and even the quartet, many people would have never heard a great concert of Johann Sebastian Bach, but they had the music and they played it in their home. And the, the concert stage is fabulous. But when people lived in country villages and out in different places, they couldn't get to a concert or they couldn't afford a concert. But with the music, they could play the music. Isn't that interesting? And I'm feeling like we need to go back to doing more music right in our homes. And I know I learned to sing really from my mother, but from my parents, when we would go on little outings, we lived in Tacoma and we did often a day trip to the ocean or to Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier was only an hour from our home. So that was a very common trip. And I remember driving up to Mount Rainier and there's some scary parts where it's straight down. And uh, as a young girl, my father had an old Dodge. It, he kept it just perfect. But we all, it was one of those wonderful cars where it's a big seat and it's so comfortable we all would sing that's what we did as we drove along and i've talked to other people people were singing it wasn't much listening to radio or other things we would sing and then my parents also were very compassionate people and they felt we needed to go and visit shut-ins elderly people and i was taken to nursing homes very young and we would sing in harmony for the people. And I learned in that way to give out. And the people were so grateful. And it teaches a child to give to someone else, someone that can't give you anything back. And it was, I look back at that as such a wonderful memory. And I know that my sister and I, we we were invited, our church had a, a ministry to the mission. And so we were invited The I remember Otto Hulset with his violin and the Norwegian band went down and they asked us to sing and we sang and we sang everywhere. And then when I went to college, my husband and I were talking, we were both at the same college, Northwest. We all had guitars everybody would just come together and sing and share a new song and everybody shared the next song. It wasn't, we did perform, we ended up in a folk group, but it wasn't about performance. It was about enjoyment and singing together and so much joy in that. And then people always would get a guitar and try to learn and guitar is not a hard instrument. 
I taught a lot of my friends to play guitar. You know, what's wonderful about a guitar, once you learn three chords, you can play a song. I actually started playing guitar with a ukulele. I, somebody gave me, I think my parents gave me a ukulele when I was like 16. That's really easy to play. And so I was playing that. Well, then I learned the guitar and then I took that chordal knowledge from the guitar because I had had piano lessons all my life and I was trained in sight reading and classical piano. But I took that chordal knowledge and put it back on my piano and started playing improvised music on the piano. And so each instrument fed the other and we inspire one another. And a guitar is such a good instrument, never too late to learn. I always meet people that regret they didn't learn an instrument. My sister-in-law, she learned the ukulele when she was in her 60s and she's really good now. She's in a ukulele band and she's playing and she takes it everywhere. I say, that is really great. And that's called being fully alive. It has been said the glory of God is man fully alive. And that brings me to something else I wanted to share. On my phone this week, up came these out of nowhere Confucius. And so many of his sayings are so brilliant, really, they are. And I found one, I thought this relates to all of us. And this is what Confucius said. If you're the smartest one in the room, you're in the wrong room. Huh. And I thought, wow, you could take that on many levels. If you are ahead of everyone in the room on a certain area, you don't really want to stay there. You want to go where other people are ahead of you so you can be challenged. You know, we want to go with the next level when we can whether it is spiritually, musically, athletically. I know if you're in a gym, you want somebody that's gonna push you a little to the next level, right? And musically, it's the same. You wanna be with people that are really good and that you can improve with. And then of course you want to help others. But I know what Confucius is saying, don't stay in mediocrity. Mediocrity is not the happy place to stay. Run the race. Run the race. And you know, the Apostle Paul, he says, we're in a race. And he says, run the race with patience. Keep your eye on the goal. So years ago, I wrote a little song to that. And I'm going to close this teapot, tea, tea talk, not teapot, tea talk with that song. I'm not going to sing it, I'm going to recite it. And it goes like this. Run, run, run the race with patience. Keep your eye on that goal and your face set as a flint and your mind under God's control. Though you feel weak and weary, all alone and much afraid, look up, for Jesus said, the price for peace has been paid. And you know that, that is shalom. Peace is shalom. When you go to Israel, and you say hello, you say shalom. And then in the Arab quarters, they say salom. It's saying peace. And if you look up that word shalom and print it out on your computer, you will be amazed at what the full meaning of shalom is.
it's your welfare it's your blessing it's your peace it's your happiness it's your kindness it's your goodness it's God's love that's what Shalom is well I do have one more little item to show I brought my favorite little purse that I've ever had in all the world and it just looks like a June bag it's a reproduction, Patricia Nash, and it's old world. And I think it matches what I'm wearing. I tried to dress like a tea party. I have a beautiful cameo. It's got green on it. And I love French green. I have kind of a lace top. I'm kind of covered up by my roses here. I'll show you, kind of a lace top with a straw hat with kind of the tans and blacks and browns and creams. And this little purse has a clasp. And you know this clasp is called? It's called a kiss clasp. Isn't that interesting? See? It's called a kiss clasp. I love this little purse. It reminds me very much of a purse that I had, my mother had, in her cedar chest that I was supposed to get. And it was my great aunt Susan's, who I'm named after. And she lived way back. They, she was a young girl, turn of the century. And uh, it was all silver mesh, this size. And inside was white kid. Well. You know, after my mother passed, I, I couldn't find that purse. I don't know what happened, where it went. No one seemed to know. Things get lost, but this is my little in memory of my great aunt Susan that I'm named after. Well, it has been so nice to be with you today. And I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you for your sweet messages. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all of your kindness. And I just think the T family is about the most beautiful group of people I've ever met. I love all of you. Your jewels and just sparkle. May this summer be beautiful for all of you. May we feel God's love filling our hearts with his comfort, his grace, knowing that there is meaning, there is purpose, there is design in everything we do. There, we, there is value, there is value. And he sees and he will reward us according to his ways and time and his love and so we want to be faithful in the little things he's given us to do right so I want to thank you again for joining me and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe please push the notification bell please share with a friend um, there are others that I know would benefit from the tea talk. And this is just a relaxing place to come and reflect and know that God loves us and that we can be our best through his grace and love to others. That's the tea talk in one word. We welcome everyone, so share. And then if you like it, push the like button. That's always fun. I appreciate every, all the comments too are so sweet. Thank you so much. And I just pray you have the most beautiful summer and as we said in Memorial Day, we remember all of our loved ones. We remember them and we're grateful. They're with us in our hearts, in our minds. They have given us so much, and now we need to give to the next generation everything we can of beauty, 
goodness and kindness and love. Okay, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next time.